If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to click on the subscribe button, then click on the settings button, check it off, and then click on save. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Terry, aka Stutzman52. We're back here with the 2001 Ford Escape 2.0 liter engine. Now in this video is not going to be for everybody. You know, because I'm going to capture some waveforms. So what I want to do is I want to look at the crank and the cam uh, sensor correlation. It's always good to have known good waveforms before, you know, if you have a problem down the road, then you have a reference waveform to go back and look to. So this is what I'm going to do in this video. Now I'm going to capture some other waveforms too. You know, like maybe the mass airflow, TPS, uh, maybe fuel pump. Look at the amperage on that. And uh, so we'll just see how to go. But I definitely want to get a cam and crank. Uh, so let's get started and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take my signals off from the PCM. Now the computer for this car is located right here. Now the connector for this is a 104 pin connector. So of course the cam and the crank signals are coming back here to this connector. And of course you can see that there's a plastic cover that goes over the connector and you can see that we have tape that's wrapped around this here plastic uh, connector housing that's wrapping around this here harness here. So what I'm going to do is I want to disconnect this. But before I do that, and that's, that's about a bolt that's right here. Now before I do that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect the DC negative cable that's here on the battery. So then that, well, I'm going to do that, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to disconnect uh, this here connector off of the uh, PCM. Uh, first thing, let's disconnect the battery cable here. Now I'm going to take out the bolt here for the connector on the PCM. 10 millimeter socket will take care of that for you. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this here vacuum line. The bolt loose. Just go ahead and pull that on out. Okay. What I've done is there's four tabs on this here black uh, housing c cover here that covers this here connector. So you just take and come in here and just release these tabs. There's four of them. There's two and there's the other two. So now the next thing is I'm going to take the utility knife and I'm going to cut this here tape. So then I can get this here off and then this here cover I can get off so I can get access to these here wires that's on this connector. Right, as you can see on the uh, ECM connector, I've already got the uh, plastic, the black uh, housing cover, it's off. Now right here, these two is going to be the channels for the crankshaft position sensor. This is a VRS type, variable electric sensor. It's going to generate an AC waveform. Now some of these sensors, the negative side is grounded. And on some, like in Ford in this generation, it's not grounded. So they consider this to be a floating, floating type sensor. Okay, so this one up here is going to be the camshaft position sensor. Now what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the positive side of the crankshaft position on channel A, which will be the blue, and I'm also going to look at the negative uh, signal off the camshaft position sensor, which will be the red, channel B. Now, when I do that, I'm only going to see about 50% amplitude of this, each one of these signals, so I will not see the entire signal, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm going to look at both sides of this here uh, crankshaft position sensor, then I'm going to put it on a math channel, I'm going to subtract the two channels and that'll give me the full amplitude of what the signal will look like. Now right here is the crankshaft position sensor. If you remember I said one side is positive, one side is negative. The negative side is floating, it is not grounded. So positive side is on 21, negative side is on 22. And you can see the color of the wires right there. The positive is black with a pink tracer, and the negative side is a gray wire with a yellow tracer. Those wires are located right up here. That's 21, that's 22. Now this one up here, pin 85, that's for the camshaft position sensor. Again, this is a VRS type sensor, so it's not a Hall effect. Neither one of them are. They're both uh, you're going to generate an AC signal. And that is going to be located, like I said, on pin 85, and that's going to be a dark blue with an orange wire. Now just to make it complete, to show you the wiring diagrams, here's the crankshaft position sensor. 
Now, as you can see, there's one connector, of course, at the uh, sensor itself, but there is no other connector from that sensor up to the PCM. So that's why I have to stab it up here because it's going to be very difficult to get down here to this connector while the engine's running. Okay, over here we have the camshaft position sensor. Now, you can see that there's a connector, C110, uh, that I could grab into, but since I'm already on the PCM, that's why I'm stabbing it up here. Besides, anyway, the signal is going to be actually looked at the PCM at this point, so this is actually the best point to be looking at, here and up here. Now I'm putting the connector back, screwing it back in. Okay, I have one question, Mr. Pike. Yes, ma'am. What's the weather like in North Carolina today? All you have to do is look at me and you can read the temperature. <laughs> Probably you can get the humidity too. But it's only 70 some degrees today. Still hot as hell. Hot as hell. As you can see, we have our leads hooked up now, and they're all grounded over here to the DC negative on the battery. Okay, we got the waveforms. These two up here, the blue and the red, that's the crankshaft position sensor. Down here, the green camshaft position sensor. All right, you notice right up in here in this area, the amplitude, we're running around 750 RPM. The engine is fully warmed up. Over here to the side, this is where the engine speed was increased to 1500 RPM. And a little bit further down, there was, uh, we went to 2000. So let me just uh, go to the next capture so you can see that. Go to the next capture and then you see we were at 2,000 RPM here, and then over here, we came back to idle, back to uh, 750 RPM. All right, let's go to our first capture. Uh, first thing what I want to do is let's uh, kind of zoom in on this area a little bit. Let's get a little bit more. All right, one of the first things you'll notice is that on this here blue trace, look at the sink notch. You can see that the signal is rising. This is that positive signal that I was talking about. If you look on the red trace, you can see in the sink notch that the signal is falling. So this is our negative signal. And of course down here, here's our camshaft position sensor. Okay, now one thing to take notice of if you may not be familiar with a crankshaft position sensor that has a floating ground, that when I'm taking a uh, voltages uh, measuring looking at the voltages here one for a one for B that the zero volts for this signal and let me move this here down let me see if I can get just to zero volts notice that the zero volts right here goes right through this area here and then on the red trace you'll notice you'll see the same thing right here okay the true representation of this crankshaft position sensor is that the zero volts will go right down through the middle. Okay. Now, this is not the true amplitude of the signal here across this cr uh, crankshaft position sensor. We're looking probably about 50% of this signal in amplitude, although the frequency is still the same. Now, you may be wondering why uh, you could just go take channel A, let's say, and I go right directly across the sensor. In other words, I'll take, say, the positive lead, channel A, I'll go to the positive signal, and then I could take my ground for that channel, and then I could put that right on the negative side of this here signal. I would, that's, and that's fine, and you can do that. And then you will get a true representation of that crankshaft position sensor and you will see it in its true form as far as in the amplitude or what it really is. Now, when you do that, and, you, and I'm using a 4423 scope, that means that all of the grounds that's on each one of these channels are internally tied together. That means that I cannot look at anything else on any of the other channels. If I did, if I was to happen to say, hook up this camshaft position sensor on there, and I had the crank sensor hooked up on channel A, as I just mentioned, then what will happen is I would actually be grounding out this here negative side of this signal on this crankshaft position sensor, and then the vehicle wouldn't start. So I wanted to look at it all together. But... To get around that so I can see the true representation of this crankshaft position sensor, I'm going to use a math channel. So I'm going to go up to Tools, 
go to math channels and I'm going to do a subtraction of A minus B between those two signals. That's going to throw up another signal here and you can see it's in the purple here and if first thing you'll notice if you look over here at the zero the zero volt line where my cursor is on to the right at the bottom of the screen you can see that the zero volts runs right in the middle of that AC waveform also I am getting a true representation of the voltage of this here waveform so let's go ahead let's take a quick look let's just see how much this here waveform is in height running at 750 RPM and let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get another zoom in on that so you guys can probably see it a little bit better yep that looks pretty good okay so if I look up here I can see that the peak to peak voltage on this here waveform this is what the what it would really look like on that crankshaft position sensor is about 12.5 volts okay now just out of curiosity if you want to go up here you say let's look at this one up here and I'm gonna look at this one right here so you can see that that one there this one here the negative the negative signal the red trace is about 6.3 volts and it's very similar to the trace up above up here so it'll be about six about 6.3 volts also okay so now let's take another look let's just see what it is for our cam sensor let's just see what kind of voltage we're running on that one looks pretty good now so on that one we are running just about two volts peak to peak so a pretty big difference so we got a two volt peak to peak on the camshaft position sensor and on the crank sensor we're running about 12 and a half volts peak to peak all right another thing I want to look at is I want to look at the timing between the sink notch on the crankshaft position sensor and where on, and on this here camshaft position sensor so I'm gonna come down to the lower right I'm gonna grab the degree ruler and I'm gonna move him over and I'm gonna put him just about in the center right up there in that rising edge right up in that center right there maybe just yeah about right there now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna grab another ruler and I'm gonna put it over here on this side right in the same spot now that right there from this point here to this point right here that represents 360 degrees of the crank and you can see I have the 360 degrees it's already set for me now I'm gonna come back over here I'm gonna grab a time cursor and I'm gonna move him over here to about say in the center of this here camshaft position sensor that green trace that looks pretty good now if I look up here I can see that it's 125.1 degrees between this ruler here and this ruler right here and that's pretty much everything that I wanted to see right there uh, one other thing is you may notice that with uh, the VRS type sensors that's a variable reluctance sensor where they generate their own voltage they don't need they do not need a um, power source they generate their own voltage on their own and if I look right in here you can also see that the frequency and the amplitude has increased so we can get on down in there and let me see if I can just sh shove him up a little bit let me sh shove him out of the way now I'm gonna get my red let me shove him up just a tad and let's go to right here okay and now let me go ahead and get rid of the markers for right now and now let's bring down let's just just for curiosity if we're running at 1500 rpm right here what kind of voltage are we looking at so I'm looking right there so now you can see that we have gone to 24 and a half volts peak to peak okay one last thing that we can do let me go into here let me zoom back in a little bit let 
We'll just keep zooming on in on this thing. Let's get rid of that marker. And if I come to right here, and I come to right here, if you look right down in here, you can see it's running at, uh, might be a little bit hard to see, but it's 763 RPM. So, all looks pretty good to me. All right, guys, there you go. Crank and camshaft position sensors. And I uh, hope you enjoy that, and we'll see you guys in the next video. You take care.